shot of Craven Cottage, which will be a terrific end point for this first part of the season for Manchester United, who now cut that gap to the top four to just three points. And in the end, what a way to wrap up the final Premier League game before the World Cup as the league takes a six-week breather. And this is how it all played out. A special win for Brentford, of course. Away to the defending champions, Manchester City. Brent uh, Bournemouth with that much-needed win over a struggling Everton. Liverpool stringing back-to-back -back wins at the end of this first part of the campaign against Southampton. Forest have found this season tough going since their promotion. They picked up a, a needed win themselves at home to Crystal Palace. Spurs, it's been an eventful time for Antonio Conte since he took the helm this season. They came out on top in the seven-goal thriller against Leeds United. Leicester's initial struggles have come good towards the end of this campaign as we now take a breather heading towards Boxing Day. Newcastle's terrific campaign continued with that win against Chelsea, as did Arsenal with that win at Wolves. And today has seen a win for Aston Villa away to Brighton. And then for Manchester United away to Fulham. This will make good reading for Arsenal fans. They sit top of the table for the next six weeks. Five points clear at the summit on 37 points. Manchester City then the second on 32. Both have played a game fewer. The Newcastle in third on 30 points. And Tottenham, who are in the final Champions League place on 29. Manchester United sign off in fifth place. Just three points shy of the top four, having played 14 games. Liverpool seven points off the top four with a game in hand. Brighton in the final European place. Chelsea are in eighth, eight points off the top four. Fulham and Brentford complete the top ten. Wolves will prop up the table until Boxing Day on ten points. Four points adrift of safety. Joining the bottom three by Southampton and Nottingham Forest. Everton West Ham is safe by just a point. Leeds two points clear of the drop zone. Bournemouth three. Leicester have a four-point cushion. Aston Villa up to twelfth. Safe by five points with Palace just above them. Bruno, Christian, have we just seen a bit of magic secure all three points for Manchester United? Uh, yeah, I think in, in the end we just happy with the three points. And I think it was a, it was a hard fought game on, on the both ends, but uh, yeah, I'm very pleasing with the three points in the end. Bruno, you've spoken about him. Just how much talent does Alejandro Garnacho have? Oh, yes, he has a lot of talent, and obviously he's worked great. Together with the with the talent, make make big difference for us. Coming from the bench, it's not the first time that he makes a, a big impact for us. So we are we are really happy for him, and uh, we know that he can give you can give us goals, assists, and uh, and pure joy of football. You've said previously that if he has the right approach, he can go all the way. Are you seeing signs of that? I think everyone is seeing signs of that, uh, not because of his goals or, uh, or his assists, but the way he comes into the games, you know, coming from the bench, no one likes to be on the bench. So uh, if you are a young holder, it doesn't matter, you don't like to be on the bench. So the attitude that he has when he comes off from the bench is being fantastic. So I think he's being deserved the, the chances that he's getting and he's getting his goals, his rewards. So that's, that's what his football is about. Christian, first goal for Manchester United. What does that mean to you? Uh, just like Bruno said about time, uh, I think uh, it's uh, I've owed a few, so I'm happy to get on. Uh, yeah, it's true. But I've owed a few, and just happy to be on the score sheet. And of course, today in the, in the end, uh, last game before the World Cup is uh, and the three points in the end is uh, is lovely. It's a great story. What sort of week has it been for you? Named in the squad, obviously, to go to the World Cup and to get the goal too. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been a good week. I mean, it started last week, of course, Finn is not as good with the with the loss at, at Villa, but afterwards it's uh, it's picked up and we have the point we're in the in the cup and like I said, to the to the World Cup. I mean, I've worked hard to get there, so I'm happy. To yeah, he talks there almost with a sense of relief. He says it's about time he scored for Manchester United. But that got the ball rolling, of course, as far as Ten Hag side is concerned. But the headlines will be dominated by a certain 18-year-old. Alejandro Garnacho, who's already shown glimpses of a real talent and has probably announced his arrival today, is he not, Michael? Yeah, you definitely say so. He's going to hit the, hit the headlines. Yeah. And, of course, just to be an 18-year-old in this squad, that says it all. You know, he's obviously got an awful lot of talent. We can't wait to see more of that in the Premier League over the coming years. Uh, he made an impact today. He came on the first couple of times he ran uh, at his man. It didn't quite uh, come off, but... He was brave enough to keep going and keep going, and this was a lovely goal. Um, he just feeds it inside. Look how direct he is. He feeds it inside, continues his run, 
and he just strokes it into the corner. No panic whatsoever. Even when I watch it now, I'm not quite sure how he gets on the end of it because he seems like he's second best behind mm. Deco over Reed, but he somehow shows a burst of acceleration, gets himself in there. But as we said, he's so direct, he knows exactly where he wants to, to go with the ball, whether he's running without the ball or running with the ball. But I really like the celebration. There's a touch of arrogance with the celebration, which I don't mind at all. Yeah. But I mean, as you said there, with the attributes that he's got, if his work rate and game obviously goes alongside his, his skill, then there's no reason how, how far he could go. There's no fear about that guy right now. No. You could see almost in the way that he celebrates it. That's the beauty of being 18. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you could only bottle that uh, all your life, no fear whatsoever. You go on there with like a, a cockiness and arrogance, and uh, and from now on, it's all what's going on between his ears. That's the thing. Now he's obviously got the talent. He's obviously got the pace, the touch, the skill, the confidence. Now it's not getting carried away, and it's what's between his ears that's going to make the difference between whether he's just going to be a one-hit wonder yeah. or whether he can have a nice career in the, in the game. Now, you see, now this is interesting. So he's already, of course, had an effect in the first team, two goals and two assists in his last four appearances. But there have been public quotes from Bruno Fernandes and Eric Ten Hag, his coach, talking about his attitude, how in pre-season he maybe arrived late on a couple of occasions, mm -hmm. and that his attitude n needed to improve. In a way, while it was questioned at the time, was it right to do that on a youngster? Will it serve him better in the long term? I think it will serve him better. I mean, coming from the manager, I'd say, OK, fair enough. Yeah. I didn't quite like it when it came from Bruno because I thought you've got to protect some of these, these young players. And I get it if, he's, if there was something going on in pre-season, maybe keep that in-house, mm. let the senior players kind of deal with it. But the fact that the coach came out and said it, OK, you hold your hands up. But it will serve him in good stead because everyone's seen the attributes, everyone's seen the quality that he's got moving yeah. forward onto the pitch, he can score goals, he can create. But it's about now getting on the training pitch, working hard, maybe kind of trying to, I know it's going to be hard playing for a club like Manchester United, but keeping a low profile, yeah. working hard, and let the rest take care of itself. But Michael, you don't want that to kind of raise its head again no. to today of all days, because this is a moment where you should be talking about him positively, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, and we are, we are. I mean, it's, it's a big worry, though. You know, it's a big worry at 18, and, and the manager has already come out publicly. Bruno has come out publicly and yeah. talk, spoken about attitude. I mean, that should be ironed out right away. I know in the, in the Manchester United dressing room that I was in, it would be ironed out. And previous years, so I just hope this dressing room, which I think it would be, would be strong enough to, uh, to deal with it internally, as Dan yeah. uh, says. It's, uh, it is quite worrying that that's been put out uh, in the open, but hopefully he, uh, he is, you know... Um, He's got the intelligence and he's got the know-how to, to listen to, to uh, people in experienced places and, and uh, people that have been there and seen it and done yeah. it before. But it feels like, you know, when you hear what Eric Ten Hag inherited, how he's addressed certain parts of that dressing room, he is a disciplinarian. So maybe he's got the right head coach to deal with things. Well, he has to. I think it's a, it's a massive job. And I know he was in charge of Ajax, but listen, there's a big difference between Manchester United and, and, and Ajax. Uh, Manchester United are trying to get back to where they feel they should be. And he's going to have to make big decisions. He's done that already this season. The likes yeah. of Ronaldo, the Maguire situation. He's had to make big decisions in such a short space of time. But if you look at the progression that Manchester United are showing and where they're trying to get to, you'd have to say they're making steps in the right direction. So rather than questioning the, the decisions that he's made, you've got to kind of praise him and say, well, fair play to you because it looks like you've made the right decisions. Yeah, and he's got a coach as well that believes in him, bringing him on with 20 minutes left. When Fulham look like they're in the ascendancy, he clearly has the backing of his head coach. Yeah, yeah. and I always believe actions speak louder in work than words. Mm. I mean, there's an 18-year-old in a pressure situation, they need a goal, and the manager turns to him. So that's, uh, you know, that, that speaks volumes. As I mentioned earlier, he, he, he ran it as man a couple of times. Um, early on, that first one, you know, there was shouts for penalties, but it, it wasn't. Again, here he gets his man one on one um, and, and feeds it into Luke Shaw, who, who makes the overlap. It doesn't come to, to anything in the end, although it is a good, cha a good chance. But the longer the game goes, he, he doesn't shirk it. He, uh, he makes a good run inside there, maybe a little half a, half a second too soon and, and just gets snuffed out. But then his moment comes later on in the game and it's just, uh, it's just brilliant to watch. You know, he's, look how wide he is. He's virtually off the pitch there. His first touch is good, and then he drives in. And, you know, I, I just can't believe this burst of pace. Yes. You just never think he's going to no. get it. And all of a sudden, it's, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Great pace and a great, calm, composed finish.
there. Yeah, great finish. As I said, I keep watching the replay and I still don't know how he got there, but it's a sign of things to come. He's making an impact coming from the bench. His starts will come. All he can keep doing is working hard, working with the players that he's got, the manager that he's got, and getting better and better. He loved the moment. You could see it with that fist to the camera as well. Let's get some... ...have looked far more threatening when they're in attacking positions. I've liked their intent, I've liked their pace on the break. Uh, Fulham have been quite brave, they've tried to play a high line. Mm. Manchester United have tried to exploit that. And we've been discussing as well, watching the game, how Fulham... Um, get crosses into the box, but they just don't look like scoring without Mitrovic in They're there. missing him, are they? They're missing him, yeah. Um, so, on balance, yes, Manchester United deservedly winning. Let's have a look at the uh, only goal that's been scored so far. Incredibly, Christian Eriksen's first goal uh, for Manchester United. United's midfield three, all playing a part, including Casemiro at the top there. Yeah, really good goal for Manchester United, winning back possession, but they break incredibly quick. I mean, I'm not quite sure how much Bruno meant for that pass, but... Listen, Tom Kearney, he's not played much football this season. He didn't last time there in the Premier League. And I think for this reason, look how quickly, Michael, they, yeah. they obviously they, they press, press the ball. They do. Paulinho, I think, commits himself as well, Darren. I think, and then he's on the wrong side, all of a sudden, from Ericsson. But when they do break and get it past that midfield area, look at how many players sprinting, five of them, mm. all sprinting. Now, that takes a little deflection and a little bit of look from Bruno there. You see it just clips off the heel and goes into the path of Ericsson, but... It's a very, very good goal, and it's a goal that we sort of see nowadays a lot of, you know, you, somebody makes a mistake in midfield and all of a sudden, do it quickly, yeah. don't turn back. And Manchester United, bread. they've got loads of pace up front and they're yeah. utilising it. Yeah, actually, obviously, from a striker's perspective, for both of you, the anticipation showed by Ericsson there was pretty impressive, right? Yeah, of course, because I think in that situation, you're always expecting the ball to kind of flash across that secure yeah. box, whether the keeper makes a save or it gets a nickel for defender. But as you said there, first goal for Manchester United, anticipated something might happen. Mm. And if you don't get in there, you don't get them rewards, and it's a, a good goal from Ericsson. But should United have had more than just the one goal, Michael? Probably, possibly. Yeah, they've had a couple of chances, I think that's fair. Fair to say. Um, as I said, Fulham have been playing quite a, a high line. I like this little bit of play. Um, again, as soon as they smell a chance, they, they really do flood bo bodies into the box. Six players in and around the box there, away from home. It's decent. Um, I wouldn't say that was a missed chance. I thought Leno did well as soon as Martial lifts his head, the goalkeeper's on him. Uh, and another chance here, Darren. Yeah, really good chance. I mean, Ericsson again breaking into the box. Probably should hit the target. I know it's on his weaker side and it's on the stretch, but it's... It's, I mean, it's a fantastic ball from Bruno because yeah. he can't even see Ericsson, Michael. He doesn't see Ericsson. He definitely <laughs> doesn't mean this. I've looked at it a load of times. He's looking into the box. He thinks Martial's pulling onto the penalty box. And in fact, if he did lift his head up, he'll see that Ericsson was way behind his man. It, it, it ended up looking like a great ball and it was certainly a good chance, but it would have been a fortuitous ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. We've, would have been a killer blow for Fulham, wouldn't it, to go in 2 0 down at the break? Yes. Because they've played all right. Yeah. They've had a fair bit of possession and they played all right. They just mm. look a bit toothless, don't they, up front? That's all. Talking of Fulham, and you have touched upon it already, they are holding a high defensive line. Are mm. they taking a risk in doing so? They are when you've got the, the pace of Martial and Rashford who are willing to run in behind as well. I mean, this is a fantastic ball. I mean, look how flat and high Fulham's back line are. But it's a great ball from Luke Shaw. It just leaves it into an area. And Rashford, who you know is a willing runner, he'll keep doing that over and over again. He does that. And this one here, I think Martial should do better with. Doesn't quite get the shot off, doesn't sort his feet out enough. But again here, no pressure on the ball. You've got to drop. When they stay as high as they do there, you're asking, all you've got to do is time your run. And if you do that, you'll get in every single time. And this is... Just a bad touch from Martial, mm. but it just seems to be a pattern. Again, no pressure on the ball. You've got to drop. They don't drop. They try and keep that high line, try and catch Manchester United offline. Doesn't happen. This time again, Rashford gets in and Martial. It's going to keep, continue to happen. Mm. When there's no pressure on the ball, you have to drop. You can't just stay there because when you've got the intelligence of Martial, Rashford and these guys that are quick, mm. you'll never, ever catch them. So you've got to just drop. Mm. Yeah, we've got a glimpse of Marco Silva there who ended that half remonstrating with the referee about one or two decisions. Do you feel they have been shortchanged with possible yellow card here or there? Oh, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't come away thinking, oh, the referee's had a bad, poor game or anything there. No, no. Yeah. I mean, frustration that he's he's obviously behind, mm. but uh, nothing more than that. And uh, you know, he's got a big team talk now at halftime. Absolutely, because 